You're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Yo, have you heard about the Anchor app? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Yo, no cats. Yeah, I'm serious. No, not delirious. Let me explain the functions. Number one, it comes complimentary. Are you hearing me? That means the Anchor app is free. We got all the functions necessary. Creation tools is what they call it, man. Makes it super easy to edit your podcast. Yeah, even from your pocket. Straight from your phone or your PC. It don't matter, it's still free. Anchor will distribute, you ain't gotta do a thing And they're making sure you could be heard in all the major streams Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yeah we got that Many more, go ahead, explore If you finna make the dough, wanna let you know You can make it all here, live your dream as an anchor For sure, for free, no education further With no minimum listenership, yeah, you got that correct Whatever you need, we got all you can see To make a podcast as easy as one, two, and three Download the free Anchor app to get started You can also go to anchor.fm Let's get you top charted back to the show Yeah, we gonna get it poppin' Welcome back to another episode of Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKN. The next guest I got is she's affiliated with 11 bands, two collections. She's a former Navy. She sang for Corsman School Choir, the Church Choir, and the Naval Medical Hospital in San Diego. Welcome, everybody. My guest, Linnea. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's good during this crazy time. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing great, man. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate your time. I appreciate so, uh, the invite. Thank you. So uh, can you give us a backstory on how you started singing? Absolutely, but it's really not a huge backstory because I've been doing it just naturally since I was a little kid. So like when I was five, for example, I would just naturally like see some clouds and write a song about them, you know, stupid stuff. Um, And that just carried with me, you know, as I listened to different artists and was influenced by those different artists, um, you know, I picked up techniques and styles. And I was able to listen to a song, you know, one time, and then I would have the exact melody right after that. It's just something that I've intuitively always been able to do. Okay, so uh, mm-hmm. you started you started in the church choir when you were a little kid. Actually, I uh, I performed at some family functions. I performed at some charity functions. I still do that. I love performing at charity functions. And um, certain private parties, too, I do as well. Um, And then I also uh, did singing at school competitions. Uh, I sang at the playground. Like, instead of playing kickball like the rest of the kids, I sat there and enjoyed singing and writing songs just off the bat, you know, just having fun. Uh, That was my idea of recess. (laughs) That's what's up. So, um... So describe your music to us. So I'm multi-genre. Um, the only thing I don't do is, I, I used to say I don't do country and metal, but now I just did like kind of a metal, like a Linkin Park meets Evanescence type jam. Um, but it has, you know, because Linkin Park, they rapped in there. So it's like a metal with rap in it. And I actually really, really love it. So now I'm no longer saying... I'm eliminating the genres I don't do anymore and, and increasing the ones that I do. So I'm multi-genre, alternative, hip-hop, R&B. That's where my real love is, um, especially R&B and hip-hop. I, I grew up on that. Um, and then also, you know, like some EDM. I'm exploring that uh, with some really great DJs. And it's just there's a lot of doors genre-wise opening, so I keep my variety open and my uh, my doors open as well, you know, to any kind of genre. Can you, uh, for the people that don't know what EDM is, can you explain it to us? So it's kind of like if, um, if techno and house had a baby, 
<laughs> so uh, Nine Inch Nails put together with like, I don't know, uh, David. No, I won't even say that. I'll say it, it's its own unique style of music. And it, it's, it's like um, next level tech music. There we go. Next level tech. Okay. So uh, you're like more into the R&B style? Yeah, well, I started off uh, listening to, like, SWV, Jodeci, uh, Mariah Carey, you know, uh, those really great legendary people. But then also um, I got into just really getting into my music history, doing, like, Billie Holiday. Like, her songs are amazing uh, from, like, the 1920s, right? But they're they're incredible. You know, her vocal style, uh, the, her lilts, and the ability that she had – really inspired me to do that myself in my own singing and my own songs, um, as well as like Julie London, um, Otis Redding. I mean, I love Motown. So th there's another good influence. It's, there's just so many. There, there's so many wonderful, amazing artists that brought so much to the music scene in so many different ways. And I just try to absorb it like a sponge, you know. Who's your favorite R&B singer and why? That's a hard one. Um, so, like I said, I, I grew up listening to, like, Joe to see SWV, et cetera. Um, Mary J. Blige is definitely one. Man, um, Mariah is, too, though, for certain songs. You know, you could you could call her that because um, she, she definitely brought in her horizons as well. Um, I would also say, hmm, let's see. It's just so – there's so many wonderful talents out there. It's so hard to pick. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with Mary J just so this isn't like an hour interview. But I can name them all off. I could do it. <laughs> so so, uh, so, uh, so if you could collaborate with a, any R&B artist, it would have to be Mary J, right? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to pick Mary J because, you know, with like her – uh, her family affair album and thing, and when she sung, and comparison with when she first came out, and you know, when she said, "You're my everything, and everything is you." You know, she 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 went everywhere. I admired that about her because she started her career with kind of the softer stuff, and then she got into kind of being her own person and being just fine. You know, like she she really became a, a diva in the best way, in the most positive way. And spread that positive influence. So yeah, Mary Mary J is who I'm gonna stick with. Do you have any other influences other side besides music? Um, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a, a music influence is Tina Marie as well. Of course, um, people tell me a lot that I t I sound like like a modern day Tina Marie, which is a huge compliment to me. Tina Marie is amazing. Um, and the reason why is because my other influence, my grandmother and my mom, um, they would listen to artists like that. Like I was talking about before, Billie Holiday and Julie London was my grandmother's influence. Um, and that, like Tina Marie and so forth, was my mom's influence. Um, so they're, basically my family members are huge influences to me. Um, they're there's no particular person in history that I can think of that influenced me that wasn't an artist. So, <laughs> you know, no, no political figures or anything like that, that, that made me want to do what I do. Cause I love charity so much. It's just because that's what feels right to me. That's, it feels right to, to give back both with my voice and, and, and any other means that I find, you know, a way to do so. But usually with my voice is like the, the way to reach the most amount of people, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what kind of, what charities have you performed mm -hmm. for? I'm sorry. I missed that question. What charities have you performed for? Oh, um, different government organizations, uh, um, I can start naming off like the, the VA, the Veterans Health Administration. I sang at one of their award ceremonies. I sing for both uh, veterans that have been in foreign wars that were injured. Um, and they, you know, basically lost their legs or became paralyzed. Um, had, one had his, his face half shot off. Like it was literally gone and they had to reconstruct it and, it was just it was just amazing to to sing for those people and have them come to me afterwards and, and be like, wow, 
you know, you touched my heart. It, it, you did such a good job that, you know, I cried a little that, you know, it put me into a, a, a place of peace, a, a place of forgiveness, things like that. Hearing that is priceless. So that's why I do that. And I've also sang for FDA events um, and different events for that. I've sang for like, actually sang for other in, in the jazz arena for other singers um, where one of my friends uh, wanted me to do a concert for her um, in order to benefit a charity. And I did that. Um, and then in order to benefit other uh, artist associations as well, I did that. So it really doesn't matter as long as it's for a good reason. I feel like that's the gift I'm given and that's how I'm supposed to share it. Do you have any other performances coming up? So with the whole <laughs> with the whole situation right now with COVID, people are making massive plans with me to do this show and that show. I'm supposed to have a show in Chicago. I'm supposed to go out to California uh, with True Felon Entertainment. Uh, I'm supposed to work with Kendra Collins uh, to do some shows, like I said, in the Shy, and then also um, I'm in the D.C. area doing, you know, some networking there as well. Um, I'm doing a jingle for DSSG for their clothing line. So there, there's a lot of, of different um, upcoming opportunities, not just shows. Um, I've, I've even done some little, a little bit of like side modeling and things like that, you know, just to kind of get through this COVID situation, you know, where we can really get to work and really get to touch people and be on stage, you know, and, and have them feel the music and have them empathize and, and be able to, you know, express, you know, their amazing feelings from what they get from the music. Cause I feel like if you don't do music that inv invokes feelings in people, like, what are you doing it for? You know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah, a, lots of upcoming <laughs> Do you have any specific dates? No, because of COVID, we don't. Um, literally, people are, like, telling me at the same time, as soon as this is over, I want you here, I want you there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, let's plan and schedule something after that happens because we don't know when that's going to be, unfortunately. So, like I said, in the meantime, I just do everything else I can. I'm still working on collabs. I'm working, actually, with Rockamora999. He's a wonderful producer. He's got, like, 9,000 followers on BandLab. Um, working on it with him, um, and he's phenomenal. Uh, and then Kendra Collins, um, JCT Duchy has actually approached me about some things. So there's just a plethora of good opportunities. I just got done doing a wonderful collab with Good Low. And, you know, it's just uh, a lot of long distance things that's going on right now because of the un inability to go anywhere. How did you discover Band Lab? So I can't go back to the original thing, but I know that someone. I think it was Walt's Beats. I think it was Walt's Beats, or it could have been Flo King, you know, from Rough Riders, that heard me and said, I need to do a collab with you. I need you to do it in Band Lab. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and I remember at first I thought it was too complicated to use. I was like, oh, I don't get this at all. And I just kind of was going to quit. And then they really got on me. So I can't remember if that was Flo King or Walt's Beats. But whoever it was, which, whichever one of you guys it was, thank you so much. Because after that, when I got used to using Bad Lab, it's my go-to now. I'm still going to uh, learn a doll on the side. I'm actually in process of doing that right now, like a cakewalk or something like that. Um, but in addition, Band Lab, nothing beats it for recording that I found, especially when you do in a collaborative environment. Hell yeah. So uh, how can they find you on Band Lab? So I'm under Linnea Songbird. It's spelled L-Y-N-N-A-Y-A, -N -N and then Songbird. And then there's a one after it. So Linnea Songbird is, you know, my singing and songwriting name. Um, and I have some other ghost names, too, for songwriting. But mainly that one. And then on Band Lab, it's Linnea Songbird with the number one. Okay. Do you have any other uh, social media outlets you want to tell the people how to find you? I do have an IG that, um, for some weird reason, IG put numbers after it, but it's Linnea Songbird, and that's 9598. So Linnea Songbird, 9598. 
Um, and then my YouTube, you can also search Linnea Songbird, and my channel will pop right up. I think I've got like almost 300 subscribers right now. I've got thousands of hits on the two songs that I have up there from like Hell No and TYMG. I think have like 6,000 hits, something like that. Um, and people commenting, and, and those are the, the kind of comments, like TYMG, those are the kind of comments that I do this for, because TYMG, a lot of people comment, it, it's a song about mothers, it's a song about not just moms themselves, but the, the moms that created good men and good women in our lives, um, so it's a different approach, you know, than just a typical Mother's Day song would be. But these people that comment, they're like, you know, I miss my mom. Thank you so much for the song. This touched my heart. This, And it's an upbeat song. But, you know, those when you lose your mom, it's almost like any song, you know, touches you with some sadness. And then, you know, hopefully the fact that it's upbeat can bring some joy as well. You know, and it seems like that from the comments. Hell yeah. So, uh. Can you uh, give us detail on the uh, song you mentioned first? On Hell No? Yes. I think that's up to 8,000 right now. Was, it, was that on the it. album? So that was done with uh, Rico Lumpkins, a.k.a. That Boy, in, the sh in Chicago, um, in a studio in Chicago that I recorded with him, and he produced it as well. Um, and it was actually meant initially to go to Lifetime, for one of their uh, TV movie type of situations. Um, but it turned out that it was actually a little bit too... Uh, it's it's an alternative hip-hop song. It's a little too bit too rough for them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. it, was, it was a little bit too... But they're like, we don't know where we're going to use this one. So... <laughs> so <laughs> So in in that um, in that respect, he could just kind of said, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna put this up anyway. But let's let's do something with this anyway. And he inspired me to go ahead and release it to the public and just be like, you know what, have at it, public. And I got a good response on that too as well. In fact, it's kind of ahead of its time. Some people were saying because it's almost got like a trap vibe to it, like a like a slower trap vibe. Um, to it. So if you listen to it, again, it, it's alternative hip hop um, and the words, it's actually the perspective is cool too because it's the perspective of both the woman that got cheated on but, or man that got cheated on um, versus the, the party that didn't know that that person had somebody and got stuck in the middle. So it All actually... Right. Yeah, it actually condones, it actually speaks for both of those people. Oh, that's a dope concept, man. Um, Thank you. What's the history of where you're from? The history of where I'm from as in? Uh, where you grew up. Oh, okay. Uh, outskirts, outskirts of Beemore, <laughs> not squirts. <laughs> <laughs> The outskirts of Baltimore is where I grew up. Um, but after that, you know, with the military and everything, especially, I was in the military uh, for five years active duty as a hospital corpsman, as you stated earlier. Um, and as a hospital corpsman, I traveled to Cali. I was in Cali and NMCSD. And I actually, I sang um, in a competition in order to get into the very coveted choir position um, over at the Hospital Navy Corps School in Great Lakes. Um, and 800 people auditioned and only five were picked and I was one of the five and then of the I think there were eight people total in the choir I was the only one picked to solo so that was kind of cool so um, after that I lived in Michigan I lived in the D Detroit uh, I lived in the shy uh, <laughs> I lived in VA um, which is part of DMV that I'm currently around D.C. area right now. So I've basically been living in different states all over the country. And it's really cool because I can bring that into my music. That variety comes, you know, into my, my speaking and my writing. So I love it. What inspired you to get into the Navy? 
actually to be like real talk because I'm just a very blunt person <laughs> it was the college money I'm not even gonna lie I was 17 when I went in so I didn't know what I was doing really like I didn't learn to really appreciate serving my country until I was in there and learned the value of it you know the hard way being being in there and doing so is how I learned. I learned that in boot camp. I learned that in core school. I learned that with the Marines, you know, but I certainly uh, did not have those values when I went in. I was just like, I'm not going to end up, you know, working at a gas station the rest of my life. I'm going to go for a career, which was a healthcare administration uh, career. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to see about singing. The only thing about the, the singing in the military was that you had to be able to read music and I don't, I do everything by ear. So when a producer gives me a beat, I listen to that beat and kind of like, uh, it's been described as Michelangelo seeing marble. So Michelangelo said when he saw a slab of marble, he saw what the marble was supposed to be. He saw that sculpture within that marble. It's the same way with me with music. It just naturally speaks to me and tells me what it should be. This melody should go this way with this beat. This hook should go this way. This bridge should go this way. And that's also why I don't follow a particular style of arrangement. I let the music guide me. Okay. So, uh, that's well, amazing, I don't know. Man. <laughs> If you could collaborate with any artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, I think I already said it. Tina Marie. Tina okay, Marie. Tina Marie. Okay, all right. My bad. That's, that's, that was my mess up. <laughs> okay, no, not at all. all. Right. I mean, like I said, I can name other people all day, too. Billie Holiday. I would love to collab with her. Ella Fitzgerald. I would love to collab. You know, since, since we're going dead or alive, you just increased the list that was already long. <laughs> my so I'm fault. Saying. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so how has your, how, how is your music going to evolve? Well, uh, just the fact that I'm going into EDM now is is very new to me. It's something I've never done before that I'm very excited about. Um, uh, I've I've had a couple of producers approach me like, "Look, your voice needs to be in here. Like, like we we need you, basically." And I want to accept that calling because how is a true multi genre artist going to say, "Oh, I don't do that"? You know what I mean? So the only thing I, I like I said, I, I still have exception with this country because I just feel like it's its own box. You know what I mean? It, it's just not something that that has spoken to me the way that other genres have. Um, but yes, EDM is going to be exciting. I'm very thrilled about it. Um, there's a festival that's going to be going on. I can't think of the name of it right now. I think it begins with an L. He's going to kill me for forgetting. <laughs> But the one of the producers basically said he's going to take it to that festival, um, the the songs that we do, and he's going to play it for thousands of people, and they're all going to dance to it, and they're all going to laugh and smile to it and jump to it, and I'm just thrilled that that's going to be the result. If you could go open a show for any artist, who would it be? Right now, and I know he's not in practice, Timbaland. Like, I don't even have to think about it. Timbaland. T what, Timbaland. Is one what, what is one message you could give to your fans? One message. Live life in as much positivity as you can because there's a lot of negativity in the world that you can't control. So what you can control, make it positive, make it helpful. Um, you know, make it something that other people can benefit from. If it's music, if it's art, use your talents and your creativity in whatever you do. If you don't feel like you're a creative person, use your skill set. Everybody has one. How do you feel the internet has impacted your music business? I feel like it's a positive change um, because it allows me to reach more people. It allows me to also, if I want to, just only reach a certain demographic of people. So if I feel like this song really isn't appropriate for an underage group, I can restrict that underage group from having access to it, you know, as long as they didn't lie about their age when they signed up. <laughs> that I can't do anything about. <laughs> 
but I, you'll see, um, I often put things like this is explicit, like, you know, there's, there's content in here that I feel like children shouldn't listen to. I'll make that known. And you can do that with the internet. You can restrict that, you know, to say, okay, I only want 14 and up to hear this because it's got that content in it. And I think that that's a really good way to, to utilize technology as well. You know, networking is a big deal, of course, as well. And using technology to do that is everything. Like, networking is everything anyway. What is the best advice you've been given? The best advice I've ever been given is by my grandmother, who's uh, passed away now. And it's actually a very common saying, but I use in a lot of circumstances, if I feel like stressed or overcome by something, I say, this too shall pass. If you could Good change question. any, yes, ma'am. <laughs> if you could change anything about the industry, what would it be? You know what? I think there's a lot of, okay, not to talk bad about Shakira or anything, but there's a lot of artists like that that just, they they really don't have the talent um, to, to be doing as much of what they're doing, but they're showing, they're shaking their behind, they're, they, you know what it is, you know what it is, you know, she's, she's not popular just for her music she's popular for the way she looks and the way things that she does and is willing to do and that's kind of why I will unless it's appropriate for the song I will draw the line like like why am I doing a sad song but I'm in a leotard you know what I mean like this makes no sense like like why I'm in a glittery leotard and I'm doing a sad song no I'm not doing that you know it's it's gotta match the content and I think artists like that because she's not the only one for sure they they're more about the show than they are about the talent and that's something that you know you should take on broadway or to you know a certain type of club but not as an artist who is a professional in my opinion that's just my opinion so in the future can we expect you on spotify so spotify kind of I'm, I'm going to put some things on Spotify, but Spotify kind of limits artists, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is do certain songs on Spotify. Um, Spotify actually kind of, from what I understand from True Fallon Entertainment's uh, producer, Ali, she explained to me how they kind of shortchange artists, um, whereas you can go on other media platforms and you can actually get your due. You can actually go on Song Trust. You can go in those type of platforms that will actually collect for you. Um, and, you know, they'll make sure you get your royalties. They they take a commission. They take a, a small percentage cut, but it's totally worth it. You know, DistroKid, what, whatever you choose to use. I'm not condoning one or the other. You know, I'm just saying those are some examples of some of those that that help you get your true. Um, your true due, your true royalty amount. And I just don't feel Spotify is really one of them. However, I do appreciate the, the free listening audience there. So I probably will start releasing some certain songs on there at a later date. Okay. So uh, currently right now you're signed with True Felon, correct? No. I am currently unsigned, which is why my phone is ringing off the hook and people are sending me fruit baskets and <laughs> all this other stuff. I'm not kidding. Like, I actually, they, they were like, hey, sign with us. Um, I'm like, not over a fruit basket, but that's very sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, contracts are, are, are a huge deal. You know, you're signing literally uh, a big loan when you sign with a record company. You know, the, the, there's no, like I said, I'm blunt. Like, there's no middle ground to it. There's no gray area to it. You are signing away basically your life. I did that once with the Navy. So I'm definitely going to make sure I get an entertainment lawyer to read over these contracts very, very thoroughly and pick the best opportunity. Um, like I said, there's several people, some I can name, some can't, <laughs> that are interested, several organizations, I should say, that are interested, and these people have reached out to me. Like, even Interscope reached out to me. Like, I can tell you that. I just can't tell you who. Um, 
so when <laughs> when they reach out to you and you're just kind of like, okay, what is this person's real agenda here? Because they all want to make money too, right? So you have to look at that as a big loan and you have to look at it as what are they going to do marketing wise, distribution wise? How am I going to make sure that I get that money back and then some by them doing their due diligence? Make sure certain things are included in your contract. The contract is everything. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, other professionals know what I'm saying. So if you could give any advice to any upcoming upcoming artist or performer, performer, who, what would it be? Oh, I certainly do. I certainly do. Um, I, I'll tell you what, I have, I have several influences that I go to. So don't be afraid to go to your influences. Like I said, uh, Waltz Beats and, and Flo King, they, they both influenced me to go to, to Van Lab, whichever one it was first, I don't remember. Um, I was inspired to do a different kind of genre song by Dr. Weathers. Uh, love him. And, you know, I definitely, and, and I did a collab with him too, you know, that's going to be um, on radio airplay soon. So, you know, always go to you, to your influences. Don't be afraid to, to give them a shout out and be like, not only do I love your music, but your music, especially if you have a particular song that was inspired by them, you say, you know, your music inspired me to do this. And you never know when somebody's going to listen. You never know. Ludacris followed me not too long ago. I was like, whoa i didn't think they knew ex i existed to, to be honest like somebody like ludicrous to me is all is off the charts but they're paying attention so make sure that you when they pay attention make sure that you have a good product make sure that you are doing that the most you can do you know reasonably and financially i understand it's hard especially now with people not working so take advantage of things like band lab you know take advantage of the technology that's free or nearly free and get your stuff out there. You know what? Don't let it sit. I let it, I let my stuff sit for way too long. I'm not even going to lie. Like I let my stuff sit for years because of a bad experience I had with a manager. I won't name the company, but in New York, they, they did not leave a good taste in my mouth about the industry. And therefore I was going to quit and I was just going to live a normal, you know, regular every day. And I could not stop writing music. When I tell you, I could not in the shower, in the car, it didn't matter. I could not stop. And I was finally influenced by the right person to say, Hey, don't, don't, don't keep this shut down. Don't, you know, you need to share this with the world. Don't keep this to yourself. Don't die with this, you know, pile of notebooks sitting here. Don't, don't do it. You've got to share these, this music with the world, you know, and now there's so many opportunities to do that with uh, social media. There's so many opportunities to do that with things like band lab, use them and track, you know, use them Beloco, use them. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So you got uh, followed by Ludacris, you know, oh, man, how does that make you feel? Oh, and Miami B. I mean, like, like there's a ton of, of different people that followed me that I was just like flabbergasted that they were following me that, that, or, or that, that made a comment on something I did was, was like, it's mind blowing. It really is like, like you go into child mode, you know what I mean? You're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's natural for you to do that too, you know? So basically you know, when you have enough people and the right people, people you look up to telling you, hey, keep it up. Hey, you're doing great. Hey, I, I want to hear more from you. Hey, come talk to me. That's when you know, you know you're doing this for a purpose and you know that purpose is beyond you. It's more than just you. And that and that's the best that's the best feeling. It's an amazing feeling. So Besides uh, Ludacris following you, you said that you had done collabs with Dr. Weathers? Yeah, I, I did a, I did do a, uh, it's going to be released on the radio, a radio track with uh, Dr. Weathers. I, he's awesome. That's a very talented man. Yep. How, how did that, how did that collaboration even come upon, man? Oh, and that's crazy too, because I think 
he had followed me and then I found out that he had found out about him about me because about a project that I had been doing with someone else. And you know there's bands in band lab. Um so there's certain apps that I'm on. There's there's different apps that I allow to play my music. Um and and that I allow, you know, people to basically be directed to like my IG, my YouTube, whichever I choose for that particular um platform. And then with band lab, there's crews you can be in and there's different bands. And when you're in these crews in these bands, you automatically, when somebody else collabs with somebody else, if you do what you're supposed to do and show support, because I support those who support me. So if you do what you're supposed to do and show support, you end up finding these other artists in the meantime. Well, I think that's what he was saying that he did to find me because I had collab with someone else that he already was on a good basis with heard me and was like, Oh crap, let me hit her up. And then he did. And then we did the collab together and, and it's amazing. It's a, it's a beautiful song. I can't wait till it hits the radio. I kind of wish we could share it ahead of time on band lab or something, but Nope. <laughs> wow. You know what? I've been, I've been hearing that name a lot lately. Like it's been, it's a, it's a trip. Cause I've been, I've been like, it was a couple of artists that I interviewed last week that had mentioned mm -hmm. Dr. Weathers. And yesterday, cool. I dropped a, a interview with Goodlow, and I didn't mm -hmm. know that you guys already collaborated with each other. So, you know, it's like it's, a, yeah. it's like a small world, you know? Right. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful connection. It's a wonderful way to network, um, you know, and, and above all, like, that's, that's uh, part of where, you know, you can come together as artists and have all these different, like, when I collaborated with Goodlow, you can have all these different types of styles because he has a different style than I do, you know, but we meshed. I don't know if you heard it yet. I think you did. Did you hear the song we did? Yeah, I probably heard it. I just I just don't remember on top of my head right now. Yeah, because I think you commented. I think you put a bunch of fires and said yeah, something yeah. positive. So yeah. thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah. I, I, I recognize, man. I recognize everyone. That's why I try to build this platform for everybody to come on and uh, voice their opinion and promote their music, you know? Awesome. And, and we appreciate you for it. If it wasn't for people like you, like not as many people would know, you know, what we do and what and what we strive and and wouldn't hear our heart, you know, and, and wouldn't get the backstory either. Like I was homeless at one point. Um, you know, I've, I've been through that struggle. Like, I definitely understand when people talk about being destitute because I was there. I was also abused by an ex-husband of mine. So when I, when I do these songs, when I do destitute and I do other, other songs and I have upcoming songs, um, I'm doing for a friend of mine that, you know, she does plays and it's about abuse. When I tell you, I, I can speak on that and know what I'm talking about. And I can speak on that and say things from that perspective that, you know, ev everything happens for a reason, even unfortunately these horrible things. And in my case, I think it's for the music so that somebody else that's in that situation can say, you know what, she definitely has been here and I definitely need to get out of this like she did. So that would be your best advice for anyone in that kind of predicament? My best advice is to get out of it. Yeah, but sometimes it's easier said than done. And, and I understand that, too, because it took me a long time. Um, it actually took him hurting himself first for me to leave him. Um, you know, him hurting me wasn't enough for some reason at that time. I was really young, um, really, really young. I just, you know, it was one of those Navy things. I was, I was in the military, and I met him in the military. And <clears throat> sometimes, you know, you're mentality seems one way when you first meet somebody I didn't know him long enough um and then we got too serious too fast so that's another thing I would suggest that people take your time because people can put a really good veil on um and then before you know it you're in a situation you don't want to be in but if you are in that situation already get out get get out take take baby steps if you have to or take a giant leap but get out of that situation Yep, that is correct. So, uh, so do you do any uh, performances for uh, charities for domestic? 
So I did have a couple of offers that I'm mulling over. So I'm, I'm in between managers too. Um, I, I had a manager uh, that basically had some kind of family issues to the point, like I'm not going to tell people's business, but it was to the point where they just couldn't do their job anymore. And like we had a mutual agreement that not to say like I deserve better than that, but that the music deserved better than that. The fans deserve better than that. So he, he stepped aside and he said, go ahead and, and find yourself another manager. But he wants to help me do it. He, he wants me to help the, somebody that will truly represent me the way that he wanted to represent me, um, but, but can't um, with his situation. So, you know, with that in mind, it's kind of difficult to do things on your own. And I will be looking for another manager. Um, with True Felon, I'm kind of looking towards the producer there. Um, but then I also have some other perspective people, like I said, JCT Dutchie actually approached me and I could see him being a good manager. Uh, Kedrick could be a great manager too. So th there's a lot of different, um, I guess I'm, I'm giving a lot of information that I don't know, you know, is information I should give, but like I said, I'm blunt. I'm going to share it. I already did. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, is there anything that you want to touch on that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I, I did broach the, the topic of corona and this virus and how it puts people out of work. And unfortunately, you know, there's people dying. Like it's a horrible, horrible situation that we're in. And the importance of going into your creativity. Well, that's because I know some people are committing suicide and, and very, very depressed, if not committing suicide. And I just want to stress that factor, you know, to, to really let's just talk about that for a second and say, if you are depressed, call a suicide hotline. Uh, if you are depressed, don't be afraid to reach out to a friend or a family member. If you are depressed, put on a comedy. Like, seriously, like you can psychologically change your whole perspective on your own too as well before you even need to call somebody but if that doesn't work don't be afraid to reach out either you know it's it's desperate times and they're really it, it's a really interestingly weird and horrible situation that we're going through right now uh and in this this song that i did with fetty stacks um i did it's uh called be your own hero and I did um, a, a line, a couple lines, where I basically talk about that, you know, the dream would be for humanity to be a co-op, for us all to coexist, for us all to help each other out, you know, and not have this greed and selfishness and, you know, people buying all the toilet paper, for example, you know, like, we, that was ridiculous, like, why did you feel like you were more important than the next human being that you had to take all the toilet paper? Things like that, you know, and just reach out to each other during this time. Get out of your depressive state and be creative or get out of your depressive state by reaching out to a friend and to not, you know, to have that mentality of co-op, to, to not be selfish. So, you know, I could talk on this stuff all day, but that's that's the basic thing that I, I do want to emphasize. And, and that song does that as well. So where can we find that song at? Is it released yet? It is. It is. It's actually on BandLab, but it's also on YouTube under Fetty's mm -hmm. channel. It's not under mine. It's under Fetty's channel. So my thing is, um, budget-wise, I want to do amazing videos for my fans. They deserve it. There's thousands of fans on my YouTube. They deserve a real video. So I refuse to release anything but a real video to them, which costs money, which can't be done in COVID, which... <laughs> Which, you know, is, is a great investment of both time and talent and, you know, money. Um, so in order for me to do that, I'm like, I'm not releasing, mm -hmm. you know, anything less than what my fans deserve, which is the best on YouTube. So I'll do like little things on Instagram and what have you just to kind of reach out to people and say, hey, I'm still here for you. But other than that, you know, until we get this mm -hmm. all situated, um, I'm, and I can release a real video. I went ahead and let Fetty go ahead and release it on his YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, we so we can expect more music videos from you. Yes, in, in, the, in the 
in in the future, once things get situated, I expect to be able to do some professional videos. Truth be told, I already did a couple of scenes and a couple of shots. I did a cameo in Jay Bama's video um, that's coming out as well. But again, people are waiting till after COVID um, to finish these things. And then I did an, another one where I worked with um, a videographer, a really, really good uh, Wayne's uh, Worldwide Entertainment. Uh, and that is on Instagram as well. He's on Instagram as well. And he's worked with major artists. So I'm really excited to see like what kind of uh, video shots he has because we did it by the lake and everything. <clears throat> so it's not finished. We did part of the video and not the whole thing. So now we're just kind of establishing when are we going to be able to finish this. So it's in the works. Some of it's been done, but it's not finished. And I refuse to release anything but perfection to my fans on YouTube. I just, I'm not going to do it. If you guys disagree with me, LinneaSongbird at gmail.com. Email me if I get enough responses to say, look, we don't want to wait. Just release what you got. I will do it because it's all about you guys. How many responses do we have to get? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even think of a number. This is kind of a spirit of the moment thing. But, you know, I always want to listen to the fans. So let's say 100. 100. Let's go for 100, all right? So everybody that's <laughs> listening to this, whether you're on BandLab or not, go get the app. It's free. Download it. And let her know. Let her know that we want more videos because – we need more of, of your talent because, you know, it's real. I really appreciate that immensely. Thank you so much. So do you have any final words that you want to uh, tell anybody? <clears throat> any special shout out? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of already said a lot of names, right? So uh, Waltz Beats, uh, Kendra Collins, Dr. Weathers, uh, Goodlow, uh, Jay Bama, Prada, um, let's see, uh, Rockamora999, and he's actually accepting clients right now, so y'all jump on that. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, DSSG, the whole clothing brand line, and it's people, I can't remember individual names right now, but everybody involved with that, thank you so much. It was a great shoot. Um, and uh, just uh, a lot of different uh, True Felon Entertainment, Ali, you know, their uh, umbrella under Sony and everything. So everybody there. Uh, so I, I just am really excited for the upcoming collabs. And I think everybody, I think God, of course, first and foremost, I believe in God. But I also believe in everyone, you know, having their own rights to choose their religious preferences. So, so however you're blessed, be blessed. <laughs> There you go, another episode of Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we are out.